Okay, uh, I'm doing this to uh, highlight some stuff. I realize a lot of the information I have, because uh, it was recorded off of an Android phone, will only work being played on an Android uh, phone. I can't get it to play on uh, anything else but an Android media player. So Windows media player uh, or anything else won't work. It has to be done over an Android. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to uh, play several video or several uh, of these calls um, now. Before I even do that, I need to address something here. Uh, it doesn't show the number on some of these, but you can tell I'm calling the uh, state police. Um, that whole call to the state police uh, is. Uh, well, it's done to, uh, uh, well, um, it's pretty much on here to, uh, cover me. Um, I'm going to play, uh, everything in order. Uh, this is the, uh, March 6th of 2012. And you can see the date on here as well as here the recording. My number is 304-860-0878. Ronald Collins? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, he uh, had a... Uh, I needed to make a statement for him, and I needed to follow up on something with him before uh, I uh, sent him the official statement, uh, particularly okay. concerning the uh, BlackBerry curve. Okay, I will have him come to okay? Okay. Now, that's interesting because here we're going to play uh, the uh, uh, the next in line uh, chronologically for this is uh, 
to uh, well, it is a uh, March twentieth of uh, uh, two thousand twelve. Now, that was the recording that was done um, before uh, I delivered him that little packet of information. That's also the same recording uh, that uh, uh, came from, um, or the, the same conversation that I recorded between me and Lieutenant Deeds, where we brought up the whole fact that he threatened me with these child porn charges. Uh... In fact, I might actually put that up here. Uh, well, if I do, I'll just edit this out. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? You all right? I'm doing fine, thank you. Here's the packet I told you about. Uh, there's a couple of computer disks in there, one of which has the recording of uh, Thomas Keller that I took when he was doing a uh, interrogatory uh, when he decided to insert himself in a uh, lawsuit with me claiming that uh, Trooper Eifert came to him, where I'm search warrant it says he came with Trooper Eifert. Uh, uh, there's another paper in here, as a matter of fact. It was, uh, I actually sent it to uh, the forensic lab in Charleston, because I didn't know anything about that paper. It was signed and notarized, regardless. Of that that meant that the whole argument between me and him, that was back in May. Uh, and Yeah. Yeah. This right here is uh, image of me from Southern Regional Jail, mug shot from where uh, Trooper Palmateer, uh 
pretty much beat the crap out of me. I had the, uh, it was taking like minutes after I got a big square block on the side of my head before he ran me into the uh, steel pipe that was used to hold up the clothesline in my buddy's yeah, grandma's in the backyard. Uh, I don't remember specifically. I have to look it up in here. I got all the dates and everything named in here, court cases and stuff like that you'd be able to look up. Uh, you probably have to it's, it's, but it, the information should be in that yeah. all the information is written down in here like okay. you should be able to find it and everything else yeah. and yeah. uh mentions uh statement she made uh under court under record when the whole thing was appealed to second court uh claiming that uh her mother's prosecutor and uh Trooper Duckworth basically coerced her, uh, which she said that in open court under oath. Uh, and uh, I don't want anybody ever to hear yeah, really not hard. much of We go to the hearing. No, I guess that'll work. But, uh, the, uh, there, there's a bunch of little uh, evidence in that and then in a uh, unrelated issue uh, that I'm having with uh, through harassment from another police department. Uh, right now, as it stands, I already have a uh, uh, recording of where I turned over exculpatory evidence to the Raleigh County Prosecutor's Office. Right. They didn't want to accept the exculpatory evidence. Right. Which, uh, you know... Uh, which agency was there? Uh, Beckley Police Department. Okay. Uh, includes, uh, uh, in which I, I even turned in evidence to a uh, uh, Captain Rogers at the Beckley Police Department in the whole affair because, uh, uh, well, my name was brought into it, but I wasn't mentioned by either the victim or the other witness or anybody else there. Uh, but everything was said where the cop said that I did this or uh, mm -hmm. the, that uh, cop in particular. Uh, and it's really interesting because one of the issue, one of the people who was accused of it, he wasn't mentioned in anything either. Mm -hmm. His brother was, but he wasn't. Mm -hmm. And they arrested him. None of the evidence points to him. And uh, I, I've already been set up, so I'm doing everything I can to basically mm -hmm. help him on it. The fact that I basically had to force the Raleigh County Prosecutor's Office into accepting that evidence, and whether or not they turn it over to his defense attorney or either their defense attorney is going to come up under a matter of criminal action under the, 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 the Raleigh County uh, Prosecutor's Office. Okay. And, the, I mean, flat out, to be honest with you, when we was talking on the phone, uh, and, you know, you was making uh, uh, what I basically took as excuses to it, uh, I, I really don't have a whole lot of faith in you just really doing mm -hmm. much of anything, uh, to be honest with you. But uh, and uh, in this whole situation where it involves, uh, or at least in one case where it involves an FBI agent, namely uh, Michael Hayden, mm -hmm. it took me oh hell about six years of tracking, uh, trying to backtrack through the system and everything else to find this guy, and I just got lucky. I got all the information I needed in about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Found out who his real name was, that he lived in Princeton, West Virginia. There's only three FBI agents that handle Southern West Virginia. And he was the only one that he's been here for 10 years, so he's the only one who's been here in time to for that whole little situation mm -hmm. to manifest itself. So everything basically runs back to him. I've already called Pennsylvania and everything else. Uh, now, I mentioned specifically uh, that on the search warrant, they never mentioned that USB card that's in the Blackberry, mm -hmm. uh, which is one reason I was wanting to copy the evidence, because if my pictures and everything else from the Blackberry is there, then the USB card is there. If not, it was never mentioned in the search warrant as being part of the, uh, with the BlackBerry. But it does say, you know, the phone was taken with the uh, battery in it. And, and the BlackBerry turns on to get the USB cards, the serial numbers, and all that to get out and take the battery out and find a play with it. Yeah. So, uh, and that statement that I sent to the uh, Washington Forensics Lab back in, God, I think it was May. Uh, uh, no, March, I'm sorry. I was right up with my computer was taking around in February of uh, last year. Uh, March, I uh, sent so a thing up there talking about the, 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 the evidence was taken uh, based on the fact that the issue with the Neon Thomas Kelly. Mm -hmm. 
uh, he's already been charged with uh, molesting his son TJ, the oh, uh, Thomas Jr. Um, and I never really put much stock in it because nobody wants to believe that you know somebody would do something like that, especially when you're related to him. Uh, until later on, um, the, there's also uh, <laughs> multiple issues with Karen Carlock and everything else. Right, but all this stuff is written down in here. All, right? the, all, all this stuff is on here, uh, and in fact, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which I can't really tell you how I know this, but uh, the uh, I got hold of an interesting little tidbit of information about a. Uh, as part of uh, the, uh, well, you remember the, uh, the, the the whole coin sell for a fiasco uh, a couple of years back with the FBI where they were spying on U.S. citizens and mm -hmm. everything else. Well, uh, basically, they pretty much pulled the whole thing out of mothballs because of the war on terrorism and other stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole issue with bringing uh, informants from out of state and, or from one state bringing them into another through the FBI and. I basically know how it works out here in West Virginia. Pretty much, uh, well, hell, we don't we don't have states right here in West Virginia. The, the West Virginia Constitution, the Article One, pretty much cancels that out of the West Virginia State Constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, like I said, all the information's there. All that's pretty much uh, handled. The, the 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 only real concern I have is that, like I said, I have I had evidence. Uh, related to the thing with Ashley Redden, uh, the new charges with her. Um, and in fact, uh, hell, you can just bring up the uh, warrant that is and just tell there's all kinds of things wrong with it. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, both her statement, Leah Kirk's statement, was written by uh, Trooper Duckworth uh, on the plain sheet of copy paper. In the case of Leah Kirk's statement, it was uh, put with an actual form, the, the actual form uh, uh, for the state police for taking statements that they see happen. In actual red case, which came up a month later, and the only reason uh, the charges for her were brought against me was because I was charged with uh, assaulting a police officer based on the information given to Trooper Duckworth by FBI agent Michael Kaczynski, who doesn't exist. Uh, and a harassing phone call statement because I suppose we call the FBI threatening that work and everything else. Now, the interesting thing to this is that uh, uh, when I had originally called the FBI, it was to give an investigation on on the If I hadn't spoken to a uh, uh, lieutenant out here, and then pretty much he took a statement and everything got swept under the rug. Nothing came out of it, nothing got done. So, like I said, I really don't have too much. Uh, uh, believe that you're going to get much done yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it seems to be the whole idea of protecting each other, and that seems to be the thing going on. Uh, that's the way I look at it, the way I view it, and everything else. Um, but uh, on top of that, the, uh, he threatened me over the phone. Specifically, he threatened to harm uh, myself, Ashley Redden, and my mother over the phone to me. I know the calls were uh, taped, so uh, I don't think I told you this on the phone. I threatened him on the phone back, hoping he would bring charges against me because most of the service was getting recording and so he my little issue of conspiracy. You know, I, I, the, he called me back trying to get me to admit to threatening him, which I didn't do, and he called me back again trying to talk to me. I took the uh, battery out of my cell phone at the time. Uh, because of the GPS trackers and cell phones and all that. Uh, basically, double back, set up on the hill, and watch the Bedford police drive around in circles. So there's probably a dispatch report from the 19th, from April 19th of 2006 for the Bedford police going back to the FBI. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, all this is stuff that you can pretty much find uh, just by calling people and asking. You really don't need a search warrant. I mean, looking at court records and everything else, being about you don't make any of that. You can go in get copies of it, look at it, see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And most of that's outlined, uh, including the fact that the argument between me and Thomas Keller, and you can look at uh, court records to see where he has brought uh, DVP on me for threatening to blow up the entire city of Beckley. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how the hell I'd do that one, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm pretty cocky, but I ain't really, I don't think I'm that cocky. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, when that didn't pan out. It became the terrorist search warrant 
Then following that, it became involving himself in a lawsuit I had with my uh, old landlord. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a constant process. Uh, since y'all haven't charged me with terrorism and y'all done passed it up to the U.S. Attorney's Office here in Beckley, uh, I have an interesting question as to why him nor Karen Carl I haven't been charged with making a false claim on false terrorist record. Yeah. Uh, and then again, uh, that goes back to the fact that according to Karen Carl, she's an informant for Trooper Duckworth. And he's her buddy and he'll cover up for her and everything else. Uh, she's also made a false police report about uh, her ex-boyfriend, uh, Ricky Pavich, having a child porn on his computer, to which his computer was taken. He came down here, put out paperwork and everything else for Trooper Duckworth. The computer was taken. No child porn was found on it, and it was given to Karen Carlisle. And it was never returned to him. Uh, so that in and of itself has an issue. I mean, there's, like I said, like I told you on the phone, there's a whole pattern of behavior. Here. And I mean, you can look at evidence, you can narrow it down to something small and say this and that, that incident, but it's an ongoing pattern of behavior. And uh, in the case of uh, Trooper Eford, I, he was the one who uh, got the warrant on me for uh, stalking uh, Ashley Redden when she sued me at the mall and then went and made the statement that I was stalking her. Okay, uh, well, I have a material witness for the fact that I wasn't. I seen her and told my friend who got to leave. She was there. That was it. Uh, the whole reason I was uh, able to, uh, they let me have a bond again on my uh, bond relocation hearing because she didn't agree to it, especially given the fact there was a material witness there. Uh, so, that issue in and of itself, uh, on top of the fact that, you know, he's the one who gets the search warrant. And I don't really know what this bed back here is, you know, when you guys are having coffees on your lunch breaks or whatever. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of crosstalk that goes on without, well, I, I know there is. I've been in the military. I've been involved in uh, uh, operations and stuff. And I've, I have uncles who are police officers. I know <laughs> there's a lot of crosstalk. So I'm not really quite sure what's going on or to what extent. That'll help you. If you're busy, you have a drink. Just hold it up there. But the, uh, the, uh, that whole situation comes back uh, at rather odd considering that the person who arrested me both times for warrants, even though he wasn't there to arrest me for the warrants, was coming back and volunteered. And like I told you with the whole uh, Teresa Bowling shoot, and to be honest with you, I mean, in my personal opinion, when it was published in the newspaper that they knew that he was shooting guns around the kids and beating on his wife for three years and didn't do anything about it, y'all should have done that investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, well, I guess I go back to that pattern of behavior. Uh, you know, it, it's an ongoing process. Uh, most of the information is there. Most of the relevant information that can be tracked down through court cases is there. Mm -hmm. All right, well, you, you I'll be able to find it time. within, like, the hell less than, like, a a week. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll take it. I'll take a look and see. You know, see, and see if we see any violations or anything. Okay. I mean, that's, that's all I can do, and, uh, and go from there. Well, uh, put it this way: if you get a search warrant for my records from Sprint, uh, particularly for that day in particular, uh, you can already see the whole situation with uh, uh, me calling the FBI and then the FBI calling me back twice. Yeah. Uh, if you get the search you warrant, get, but you got arrested for that. I got arrested for that, and they got dismissed as insufficient evidence okay. due to the fact there was that no... in state court? That was, yes, nice report. Uh, in fact, the FBI agent who, uh, 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 who was reported for it, uh, the name mentioned on the file was Michael Kaczynski, which was into a problem, because either I'm telling you the truth about the whole me calling the FBI uh, agent, in which case that is, you know, uh, pretty much shows a conspiracy between Trooper Duckworth and Agent Hayden, or I'm lying, and either way, it still shows that uh, a false name was given for a supposed FBI agent, and there was no record, no probable cause, no statement from an actual credible source. Uh, the FBI agent was never identified as an actual FBI agent. It was just some name slapped on the paper, which means Trooper Duckworth was falsifying evidence. Mm -hmm. And then you look at that with the whole pattern of what's going on with Palmatier, Efrid, uh, Thomas Keller, Karen Carlock, which oddly enough goes right back to Duckworth. Mm -hmm. Like I said, there's a whole pattern of behavior there. You, you can look at the evidence and see that, I mean, there's plenty of little indeficiencies. In the case of Ashley Redden, on her statement, there was, it wasn't attached to a form. It was attached, actually attached to uh, 
the same form as Leah Kirk State, but it was taken three months later. And uh, it was signed, instead of being signed down here, it was signed down like lengthways here across the edge of it. And from what I was told by actually Redden when she got in contact with me, uh, after I got off house arrest from the whole first incident, that uh, because I basically caught her on it, because I told her it looked like uh, what we had been through in the military with, you know, uh, they uh, tell us not to sign even blank sheets of paper or anything like that because uh, somebody will write whatever they want on it and then, you know, it, it's taken as a statement against us and it's used in uh, the uh, UN War Crimes Court and everything else. And like I told her, it just didn't seem all that, uh, how do I put it, um, didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Uh, more importantly, uh, according to, uh, and I have to actually cite the uh, West Virginia Codes on uh, fraud violations, but in order for an uh, official statement to be an official statement, it would either have to have the signature of the person holding office able to take that official statement or the seal of the office. Actually, statement was nothing more than something written on a plain sheet of copy paper written by Trooper Duckworth, signed by her and her mother with no signature of Trooper Duckworth, mm -hmm. which pretty much meant that that wasn't a credible, I mean, it couldn't even be used as probable cause. Mm -hmm. So let me let me take a look at this. I mean, it's it's all mentioned on there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the first one is the Um, now, next one we're going to look at uh, is 10 days after. Uh, this one is a little bit interesting because this was after uh, all the threats from uh, DJ and Nathan. When Nathan tried to set me up using Rachel Farmer uh, and uh, all this other stuff. And that right there goes to show you where a lot of these people who are informants or related to informants are all working together and tied in with the police. Uh, we're going to listen to this conversation as well. And after this is about the time that Lieutenant Deeds stopped trying to communicate with me. This is when he started avoiding me. And I wanted to give him the additional evidence. <clears throat> say state police Mrs. Vandal and we can see the date of the recording right here I was trying to get hold of Lieutenant Deeds. They were supposed to transfer me there, but I guess they just put me on hold. Uh, Lieutenant Deeds? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me uh, take him. Hold on. Okay.
cancer the same yet as he has a copy that can be treated for it. There's the possibility that he's already dead for lunch. Can I have to take the message and have uh, you? Actually, uh, yes, ma'am. Um, just tell him this is uh, Ronald Collins, and I have an update on that uh, report I gave him. Yes, ma'am. And what's your name? Uh, Ronald Collins. I might not be hearing that if it's right now. Would you spell it for me? R-O-N-A-L-D. And then my last, yes, ma'am, and then my last name is Collins. C-O-L-L-I-N-S. Okay. Sir, I will make sure he gets this message. Does he have your number? Uh, yes, ma'am, he should. Uh, if he doesn't, I'll go ahead and give it to you anyways. Uh, it's, okay. uh, 304. Uh, 860-0878. Okay. Let me repeat that. 304-860-0878. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that you put in the message you have an update on that report. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I will put that on your list. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Now, <laughs> that was uh, the 30th of March. We end up going to uh, well, the 4th of uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. The 2nd of April. This is when I finally managed to get hold of uh, Lieutenant Deeds and talk to him. He was concerned about how I got all this additional evidence uh, tying the people who set me up six years ago together and the, the, the threats and everything else, which we discussed that down there. But uh, let's uh, listen to that now. And again, this was... Uh, April 2nd, 2012. In fact, well. Yes, ma'am. Uh, let's speak with uh, Lieutenant Deeds. Some, some I, I don't understand where you're getting this new information. 
Oh, well, uh, that's a combination of uh, recorded conversations, Facebook messages, threats across Facebook, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, including the fact that, um, well, if you go to uh, John Lilly's uh, Facebook, you'll find a Michelle Jennings who happens to be a relative of Mary Ann Jennings, and Mary Ann is Mary Jennings' real name. Uh, just to give you an idea, plus, you know, all the bragging stuff they've done. Uh, you should also take into account the fact that uh, I do believe Trooper Duckworth is uh, related to Teresa Redden. Bobby Redden, actually. And, uh, well, there you go. Public, it, it's, it's public information. You can just as easily go and request it from uh, up here in town. I mean, I, I could go in and do it myself, but you're an investigating officer, so... It'd be a lot easier for you to get hold of it. Well, anyways, quite simply put, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to find out how much leeway you made in this. Check on it, see if you investigated, looked into any of it, or what. Yeah, I've contacted uh, my sources at the FBI uh, to see uh, about um, uh, any kind of agents that they may have had in this area. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you've heard what? Well, I mean, I can't, I can't tell you the details of the investigation as it's on. Oh, okay. Right here. Well, here's my point. Um, the FBI agent is really uh outside of your chain of command, isn't he? I mean, you really have no pull when it comes to the FBI. In fact, the only people who is the FBI. So, uh, you know, you looking into it, really, hmm, here's my point. If you have, if you, well, I, I know for a fact there's no Agent Kaczynski, and I know for a fact that Trooper Duckworth stated in front of Mary Jennings, who all seem to be related, uh, in some way, shape, or fashion, um, that, uh, he couldn't verify the identity of the FBI agent as an actual FBI agent. There was no evidence supported with it. So, in the meantime, you're looking at him fabricating and falsifying evidence. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure enough. I mean, that's, that's, that's how come I need to see what, you know, see what the FBI has to say about you know, whether or not there was an agent or anything like that. And, and then, then I can talk to uh, uh, my church and, and, you know, the basis of it. Well, unfortunately, you can't do it here in Raleigh County, being as, um, you know, Trooper Duckworth related to Mary Jennings, and she works with all the other magistrates, and she's the head magistrate out there. So you're actually, in, in fact, to be honest with you, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, um, on a situation like that, uh, you know, because that would actually lead to a, a greater criminal conspiracy, um, um, given, you know, when you're talking about Palmateer and everything. Oh, uh, incidentally, if you ever check the internet to look up the Teresa Bowling shooting, I, uh, well, I, I'm familiar with it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I haven't checked it recently. No. Well, no, uh, there's nothing new information on there. They're simply stating that Mr. Bowling's had contact, was abusive, brandishing a weapon and such in front of Trooper Duckworth, Palmateer, and a Deputy Lily. Amazing how those names keep coming up in all this, isn't it? Well, and, I mean, all that, too. I mean, both. Both of that, that is something else. I mean, both, both of those uh, officers have been deposed and actually testified in court. Um, you know, as far as that goes, you know, they, you know, anyone can get those records, so to speak, to, uh, as far as what their actual testimony was in the trial. Well, there's also the fact that, you know, with Trooper Duckworth being related to um, Ashley Redden and the fact that they waited a whole, uh, God, um, what was it, three, maybe six months, I don't know, I don't have the paper here, uh, before they brought Ashley Redden into the trial. And that didn't occur until the whole incident over the phone. Right. 
which incidentally, uh, uh, I do have a uh, copy of those phone records uh, on the way. So I can go ahead and give you that, and then you'll be able to verify that, you know, there was calls made between me and the FBI field office. Oh. Well, and, I mean, all that, too, I mean, both... Well, so I hit the button. It's shambling. Her maiden name is Shambling. Bobby Redden is actually related to uh, and that's, the Williams and that's family. I, I, I don't know 
Well, unfortunately, that's kind of something you're going to have to investigate because when you're talking about all these people being in-laws and cousins and married into each other, it almost seems like an organized crime structure similar to the Italian Mafia. I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert in law enforcement. I do have a few people that I've trained with that uh, are in the criminal justice uh, fields. So, well, let me, you know, like I say, it is Monday morning, so I mean, I've got a lot of appointments. So let me get some other uh, work done. And, and then, you know, like I say, that allows me to free up more time so I can look at your stuff. Okay, okay no problem. Now, I should stress at this point uh, that I gave him false information intentionally. Uh, the the whole uh, Redden Williams thing. Uh, the Reddens and the Williams are um, intermarried; they're cousins, more or less. Uh, and Duckworth married into the Williams, so he was doing a favor for you know Trooper Williams' cousin. Uh, well, cousin's wife, whatever. Um, the uh, <clears throat> Teresa Redden's maiden name is Shamblin. Uh, I know this. I've known this forever. Uh, Ashley told me this when she was 13. When she mentioned Shamblin, I was like, what? Because I, I, I thought Shamblin, like, you know, a zombie shambles in uh, brains. Um, and as you can tell, I start mentioning criminal undertakings of these people. And then all of a sudden, everything gets bad. The uh, uh, trooper uh, Deeds, Lieutenant Deeds, starts um, covering up, trying to cover up the criminal activity of Magistrate Mary Jennings and, and the relation of the Reddens and the Kirks and how all these people are associated with each other. Uh, in fact, there's a few more phone calls on here that uh, deal with uh, the fact that I couldn't get hold of him. And uh, I called him uh, twice on uh, April 4th trying to get in contact with him and he avoided me. I called him once on April 5th and uh, no response. Uh, I caught him, uh, didn't call him after that because I kept getting a runaround. So what happens is on April 10th, I had actually called him. Uh, I don't have that recording. Uh, I think my phone wasn't recording at the time when I called. Uh, or there's a problem with it. However, um, on April 10th, uh, 2012, I called, uh, uh, the um, Office of Professional Standards in Charleston, Captain White. Now, this recording is unique because it actually shows the phone number to Captain White's office. Uh, and I kept it that way for a reason. And as you can tell, the phone number is right there. Thank you for calling Washington State Police. David speaking. How may we help you? Uh, yes, I need to speak with Captain White. And you can see the date. Yes, Ronald Collins. 410 2012. Uh, because I would like to follow up on a complaint I lost with him about his investigating officer. Right. 
if I don't hear back from him from today, I'll just launch a complaint with him with the superintendent of the state police. Thank you. You complained about Lieutenant Beach refusing to look at the further evidence? Yes, ma'am. Now, that's highly important because April 11th, the child pornography warrant was issued. And this comes up that they're trying to, this evidence in and of itself shows that they're trying to cover up for the wrongdoing of not only other police officers to harass me and threaten me, but uh, how all these people are interrelated, almost like they're protecting this little area of organized crime but it doesn't top off at mary jennings and and, and uh trooper duckworth or palmateer or any of them because then you start going into uh the other little clout angle um and we're going to deal with that as well but i want this video right here just to have these recordings as record uh i'm going to show them in court in fact i'm going to edit out you know me talking um to uh so it'll be pure evidence pure recordings of what's on these and i'm going to leave it at that because this is um you know far far more important than just me uh what's going on with me now it looks like there's a whole lot more tied into it because i've given uh I gave Lieutenant Deeds uh, the knowledge six days before I went to um, six days before I uh, went to uh, Captain White, and I should point out that uh, my conversation with him on the fourth, um, you know, uh, even counting the fourth uh, as in this. Um, that the 7th and 8th was uh, weekends. Um, was a weekend. So he actually had, you know, three days in between that. Uh, three working days in between that to get hold of me. And he didn't. Um, and I didn't... Th uh, he had this knowledge. And now, as a police officer, uh, he is duty-bound to report it to his superiors that there might be evidence of this, to, uh, 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 to get this evidence. Instead, he avoided me and told me, you know, I can call back and find out whenever he can come in and everything else. Instead of saying, you know, let's sit down and talk. And it, every time I've dealt with him, he's, he's made excuses and tried to avoid me. The few times he does talk to me, uh, he's kind of played everything out or uh, uh, ignored it or made excuses for everything. And in this case, he had uh, knowledge. Uh, he had foreknowledge that this is the evidence. This is where all this stuff comes from. Um, now, that conversation with Rachel Farmer, I'm not too sure if I recorded it or not. I think my uh, phone might have malfunctioned when I recorded it. Uh, it might have, might not have. Uh, I don't really know. I don't really care because just the fact that I'm saying that there's additional evidence of showing that magistrates and police officers are structured like an organized crime syndicate and that they're tied into covering up other offenses including you know child pandering and child molestation and everything else here you have the West Virginia State Police protecting them protecting not only other cops but magistrates and, and criminals and everything else who are associated who are related to these cops there you go plain and simple uh, and then the day after I say I'm going to the superintendent of state police on Captain White, a, a, the arrest warrant is issued by Trooper Eford, which makes you come up to, you know, an interesting little question here. Um, number one, uh, was this the result of Captain White telling Deeds to do his job? Or number two, uh, was this, you know, Captain White telling Lieutenant Deeds to come after me? Or was it, you know, uh, something here? Because why would you get a second search warrant? Uh, and they said my computers and the evidence was in lockup, that it was there at the police station. That when he looked into it, he found it there, <coughs> there at the police station. Which means the second search warrant, the October 26th search warrant for child porn, put that information uh, in... Uh, uh, Put that information um, back out, took it out of the forensics lab, and put it in the police station. Uh, 
Why would you take evidence out of a forensics lab that has to be investigated by a forensics lab only to get the search warrant, uh, you know, or only get the arrest warrant after someone threatens to go to your superior superior because you're not doing your job? And April 14th, I sent everything to the governor's office, which means we have to ask what exactly is Governor Tomlin. And he has this recording and all this other information there. Uh, the forensics lab can very easily take it and, and, and use the proper media settings and play it on an Android phone. And I've even noted that in my little report to the governor's office. So what you have here is an issue to bring to mind these questions. And the fact that, you know, magically, um, my lawyer, uh, uh, Mingo Winters, magically his office burns down, destroys a cell phone, uh, an extra cell phone that I had uh, that the police didn't take that had messages between me and Ashley uh, because it wasn't where they were looking for, um, that had these messages between me and Ashley uh, at the time, because this was the cell phone I bought after. Um, you can tell because it, see, it says Verizon. I had a Sprint phone all the way up until all this bullshit started. And then I got a Verizon phone to get away from Ashley stalking me. Uh, but they took my BlackBerry, which was a Verizon phone, and, and everything else. And this was the phone I had to get after. So this was, you know, not included in that terrorist search warrant. Uh, but the interesting thing about it is the phone that I had that showed messages between me and Ashley that we were talking, that we were, uh, 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 we'd argue, but then we'd, you know, friends argue, especially in a stressed out situation we were, that we would argue and then we would, you know, fight and then we'd make up and then we'd be cool and then we'd talk to each other and we'd be friends and everything else. You know, it, it comes down to it that that evidence was destroyed. Fine, you can get my phone records to show where she called me. We had my phone records to show where she called me, but magically the building burns down, and my lawyer makes excuses about getting those phone records. Doesn't want to get them, doesn't file subpoenas for them. Uh, uh, keeps trying to distract me with talking about the computer because I had uh, evidence on the computer that would, uh, the exculpatory evidence on the computer, which I made copies of and he didn't know about it, uh, which was uh, tucked away and hidden somewhere. So, um, all that information is there. I managed to hide it and float it around uh, and to, to protect myself and yet somehow when they think the evidence is gone they don't want to go after looking for more and that, I'm sorry that shows some sort of uh, either criminal conspiracy or blatant um, uh, uh, favoritism uh, towards you know not caring if you actually committed a crime but as long as they can get a conviction. motion or not, but the uh, time for my computers of when they've gone has already been up for like a year. The what? The time. They've had my computers for over a year. My laptops have got the evidence and everything. Well, we already filed the motion and it was denied related to computers. Uh, okay, but aren't they supposed to, if they have my stuff for over a year and still don't charge me, aren't they supposed to give it back to me at some point in time or something? Well, I mean, part of the problem that we run into on Anyway, uh, um, I don't know that evidentiary issue specifically, but I can look it up. Um, I agree with you, but giving them back to you on that, but there's no doubt about that. Here's my problem. There's evidence on those laptops which help correlate to proving my innocence. The police took them under a supposed terror search warrant because I was allegedly going to blow up the entire city of Beckley. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm cocky, but I'm not that cocky. The, that whole thing in and of itself, their star witnesses to this happened to be my pedophile uncle and his snitch girlfriend who, uh, on that Blackberry they have, uh, has a whole argument between me, her, and him where she's talking about her good friend at the Beckley Police Department, Greg. 
and she's made prior statements to how her and her friend Gregory Duckworth are buddies. Now, that's exclusionary evidence. It, it, it points to conspiracy and everything else. My point is, I need it. They won't give it to me. They won't even give me copies of my files. If you look, I mean, the, the, the fact that it's there is there. I know that, you know, lawyers don't like this shit from the bench, but appeal it if you have to. Take the motion to civil court and, hell, take it to the state Supreme Court. I don't care. The fact that they have my computers, they should have done returned them to me lawfully since they haven't charged me with anything, shows that they're, con that, that, uh, uh, when did they, the 25th, uh, this month of last year. Yeah, so February 25th of last two year. Two days, 367 days. Yeah. No charges have been filed against me. There's nothing on it. There's no plan to blow up back lead, none of that. There's not even the security assessment I did years ago for security. At that point, <laughs> they were searching for computers. Yeah. No, supposedly they were searching my computers because of a terrorist threat to blow up back lead, and they were right. looking for plans to do so. And, and that's, but that's from, from where it began. That information that your uncle gave to them. Well, what happened, uh, and it wasn't even that, um, my uncle, uh, me and my uncle had a dispute. Uh, he was brought up on charges for molesting my cousin TJ. I didn't believe it. No one in the family wanted to believe it. But when I ended up living with him, I ended up seeing some stuff coming from him that I really didn't like. It made me question that. Uh, so one thing led to another. I told him I was going to press charges against him. After that, him and his girlfriend, Karen Carlock, became involved in uh, my lawsuit against Chipley. Uh, they went to the state of West Virginia and told them that, uh, uh, and he's the this. On the warrant for the terrorism stuff, uh, it says the, the, the state police officers involved, who are also the same state police officers involved in this case with Ashley Redden. Uh, went and said that Tommy came to them. According to Tommy, what he said on tape was that, which I, uh, I don't have either because that was I, I taped him during an interrogatory for the uh, whole situation for the uh, Ch lawsuit against Chipley, which that's on file with uh, whatever for the court case. He said, uh, I was so excited for uh, false eviction, breaking into my apartment, uh, having other tenants, handyman employees of him to harass me, uh, a whole number of, I mean, it was just ugly. It lasted for almost years in front of uh, Judge Burnside. And Judge Burnside actually congratulated me towards the end of it and said that I did a remarkable job of showing that there was a bunch of stuff that was messed up at the apartment, but I just didn't show any monetary damages for me, so he couldn't award me any money, but I basically won the case anyway. And then when my uncle and Karen Carlock became involved, uh, they became involved first with the Chipley case. He went and got a DVP on me, said that I threatened to blow up Beckley and all this other stuff. Uh, when I went there for the DVP hearing, uh, I didn't have any witnesses to call it. It was just me against them. Uh, but they went in there and said that I threatened to kill my cousin Junior with a knife, uh, that uh, I threatened to blow up the entire city of Beckley, and there was something else to it. I don't remember. Uh, oh, that I was in the kitchen stabbing stuff with a knife. And so when the judge asked me, was I, did I ever threaten to stab my cousin with a knife, I said no. When she asked me uh, if, uh, I ever stood, if I ever stabbed the furniture or anything in the kitchen with a knife, I said no. When she asked me, was I ever standing in the kitchen with a knife, I was like, well, yeah, plenty of times because I usually cook with a knife. You know, when I'm cooking steaks and stuff like that, instead of sitting there and trying to have you know, one thing to flip it with and a knife to cut it to keep it done, I just use a knife for the whole thing. Very right. And then when Karen Carlock went in there, she said that she told him that and then said I was chasing somebody up the, the, the road with a sledgehammer threatening to kill him and all this just added a whole bunch of stuff to it. The judge said that, they were, that the evidence was not credible on their part and dismissed the DVP against me. 
uh, when I originally didn't show up for the first DVP hearing because I was in jail because of this Ashley stuff and I had no evidence, my mom went up there and filed the thing for me to get it extended. Uh, that's when Tommy and Karen went to the state police and told them the same thing. Then they came and took my computers and everything else under a terrorist search warrant. Well, here's what I'll do. I'll file a renewed motion to compel the release, and I'll put that information in there, that the state police have had this uh, information or had these computers for more than one year. I'll tell you what, can, one year. Uh, put one other thing in there, and I really seriously want you to do this. Uh, in fact, if you don't want to do it, go ahead and remove yourself as my attorney. I want you to put in there very specifically, uh, Get can you subpoena the interrogatory? from uh, the Chipley case. Because the interrogatory from the Chipley case has uh, my uncle, Thomas Keller, stating that the state troopers came to him, whereas the warrant for the terrorist search warrant says that Tommy came to them. So either it's the cops lying or my uncle's lying. Either way, if the cops are lying, that pretty much tears out their case. If Tommy's lying, then that pretty much kills him as a witness. Who is Chipley's lawyer? Uh, he had six different ones. The last one he had worked for, uh, thinking of, uh, no, uh, it was uh, Nationwide uh, Insurance. It was nationwide a, insurance. Yeah, Nationwide Child Insurance. Well, I don't know for sure if I can do that or not. I'll do some research. I mean, and, uh, well, what I'm, what I'm saying is this. The evidence, as it shows right there, is enough to come up to, to make the argument that it's exculpatory evidence that possibly shows a biased investigation and falsification of evidence. That you, you can even say that that's what I'm saying. That you don't feel that way, but that's what you're trying to do. It just, it's outside of the scope of our case, the one that I, that I represent you on. No, it's not. It is as far as the factual scenarios that would convict you if you are so convicted. Okay, here's the problem. This is what I'm saying. You're saying outside the factual scenarios. What factual scenarios? The factual scenarios that I have a girl stalking me, Ashley Redden. Okay, what girl gets up there in court and claims she thought someone was going to rape her, then changes her story on record in civil court when it's appealed to civil court and says she didn't think that until her mom, the prosecutor, and the cop kept telling her that. The same cop, I should point out, uh, uh, Palmateer, also made a statement in the Teresa Bowling shooting that uh, him and Duckworth were really good friends and that he was aware of the guy who shot his wife in the head was pulling guns on the kids and everything else. That violates his duty. Okay, here's the problem. This is what I'm saying. You're saying outside the factual scenarios. What factual scenarios? The factual scenarios that I have a girl stalking me. Ashley Redden. Okay. What girl gets up there in court and claims she thought someone was going to rape her, then changes her story on record in civil court when it's appealed to civil court and says she didn't think that until her mom, the prosecutor, and the cop kept telling her that? The same cop, I should point out, uh, uh, Palmateer, also made a statement in the Teresa Bowling shooting that uh, him and Duckworth were really good friends and that he was aware of the guy who shot his wife in the head was pulling guns on the kids and everything else. That violates his duty to report the fact that the cop, uh, that, that, that it was brought up in that case because it was in the newspaper, that uh, when he shot his wife, he specifically asked for Duckworth and Palmateer. Then you're going to tell me that off the state trooper Efred, who got me on this terrorist search warrant crap, who's also named as one of the people who gets who, on the warrant for me because of actually stalking me, or I'm sorry, me, uh, supposedly stalking her, is also the one that comes here to get me for my terrorist search warrant. Uh, the recording of uh, Karen Carlock talking about how she's uh, basically buddies and an informant for the state police. Uh, the fact that this terrorist search warrant says that uh, my uncle came to them, whereas my uncle said under a different, in, in a different situation under oath that they came to him. Either way, one of the two is lying. And if he's the witness and he's lying, then that kind of throws everything out of court. If the cop's lying, then, and, and my uncle's not, 
then that kind of looks like a biased investigation, more of an inquisition. That goes back to the whole fact that basically I'm being harassed by these police officers. Do you know what year you filed your um, face against Chipley? Uh, God, um, see, no, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, but it was it against. It was Ronald Collins versus Rent West Virginia Rent LLC. West Virginia. Yeah, uh, he had he had an LLC, so I couldn't go against him specifically. I had to name the LLC. West Virginia spelled out or WV? Uh, WV Rent WV. LLC. Yeah, uh, he had six different lawyers. Uh, most of them came in. As soon as they came in, they tried the same excuse for we're an LLC and he can't sue us and he can't do this and he can't do that and like the subsection of the code they were quoting and all the stuff they were hollering there's this little subsection D in there that said does that you know that all these steps of what I'm supposed to do of applying it to the uh, state treasurer and everything else because of the LLC thing does not prevent me from being able to take someone to court so every time they'd come in every time I'd mention that little subsection D which kind of threw up the whole, you know, I, I don't have to do it, but it's a good idea for me to do it type situation of the code. And then Chipley would fire him, hire another lawyer, and they'd come back and make the same argument. Well, what I'll do is I'll go up and figure out who his lawyer would have been. And you think, was it in a, Kevin deposition? Was, something. Was it in a deposition or was it in an interrogatory? Uh, it was an interrogatory. So a written document? Uh, no, it was uh, recorded by a court recorder. Okay. Um, and then I had a little... Uh, uh, music player that had a, a record button on it that I had recorded, which is also uh, something that was taken in the uh, thing. And that's an important one because during the time that actually Redden was in contact with me, uh, she was in contact with me when I was on house arrest through uh, Teddy Massey uh, and his girlfriend at the time, Ashley May. And then Ashley May started seeing Ashley Redden as a threat because actually May was wanting to try to hook up with me and I didn't want to hook up with her because I just didn't like her like that. So she started trying to do things to cause arguments and conflicts between me and Ashley Red. And that exploded into a whole other situation. We had a big fight and then we just went our separate ways. And I was cool with that up and until I had three guys coming threatening to kick my ass because Ashley told them I raped her. Well, let me... Uh I'll run over to the clerk's office and try to find that case and try to find some evidence I mean, as to, as to it, it may even be a file. I don't know. Because, I mean, I, this, this, this is ridiculous. For one, you know, I write books on martial arts and stuff. Uh, I've published several of them. Uh, and, okay, fine. I, I actually wrote a book on, uh, it was an examination of modern terrorism. Uh, it talks about how I didn't mention the formulas that were used to make anything, but I talked about the mechanics of how certain bombs were designed and stuff like that for the sole purpose of, and it was written primarily for military law enforcement types, uh, security people. You know, uh, you pick it up and you get to sit there and look through and see how certain situations apply, how certain tactics are used by certain groups in certain ways. Uh, it was written kind of half as a how-to, in a half, halfway in a how-to uh, format. For the simple fact that it was written that way to basically, and I even went into the psychology of it and everything else. I didn't have it published in my name because I thought there would be kind of some One issues. Name was published. It was just published under anonymous. Okay. Uh, but I have uh, like uh, royalty check statements from my publisher that shows where I'm getting royalties for the books themselves. Okay. Uh, you do get royalties from? Yes, I do. Uh, not a lot because all of this has basically just been destroying my character publicly and I can't really do anything with it. Uh, and I didn't publish it as anonymous because of that, but e even my martial arts stuff doesn't sell that much because this is tearing down my character. It's character assassination. They're covering up evidence. They're hiding evidence. The, 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 when I gather evidence to defend myself, they're taking it away from me and then trying to claim that I committed a crime. And then when they're supposed to give it back to me, they're not giving it back to me under whatever pretense. Look, I've already been handcuffed, had the living shit kicked out of me. I've had stuff stolen from me. I, I've literally had two books of mine taken out of my car, which were never recorded as objects taken from me by the police. One was the history and traditions of the martial arts fraternity, which I'm a part of. 
another one is a book on a kata that we all have to be able to do as members of that fraternity. Both of those books were taken out of my car uh, by State Trooper Duckworth, and uh, not Duckworth, by State Trooper Palmateer and by uh, State Trooper Moore. None of that was recorded. I was never given a receipt. It was never put in with my stuff. They just took them. Now, I, they're going to take my computers because of terrorism. Okay, well, fine. You know what? Fuck the terrorism bullshit. They want to make a terrorist. They're working on damn sure doing it. Because I, not only am I, not only am I pissed the fuck off. Tell me, calm down. When you've done this for six fucking years, when you've woken up with like a gun to your head for six fucking years, because every time you turn around, somebody wants to fabricate evidence against you and hide behind a fucking badge. Look, I, I swore an oath to uphold and defend the constitution of my, the constitution of the United States government against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I have been really fucking good about keeping my temper. Compared to what I can do, yeah, you know what, I probably could damn, well I don't know if I could blow up the entire city, but I could damn sure do a lot of damage. I've trained with guys who train special forces units that make Navy SEALs and our guys look like fucking Girl Scouts. I've trained with, hell, Frank Dukes, who helped write the uh, Navy SEAL spec warfare manual. I've trained with guys with C, who were operatives for the CIA. I've trained with guys who train SWAT teams. I've trained with guys who are federal marshals or grand masters that train their uh, hostage rescue teams and everything else. The stuff they know, I know. I might not have some nice little school degree that says I graduated from some academy or whatever that gave me that, but my ability to train with these people, I've taken, I've milked every opportunity that I can. The fact that I took my ninjutsu training and modernized it by adding my infantry training to it into a that's why I got my 6th black belt for it. Uh, and you can look it up on your computer, just uh, type in Fort Walton Beach, it's uh, uh, the whole Fort Walton Beach thing with us at the bottom little of the picture in 2010, October 2010. I'm down there with guys who are legends, guys they make movies about. And I can't do anything with it because every time I turn around, I'm getting arrested for some bullshit. I'm getting harassed. Now, I really don't give a fuck. I, I, I've done enough evidence, gathered enough evidence to make the point that I can prove that these people haven't done a single goddamn thing legally, that they're covering up evidence and hiding it. Even the court records show that as is. Fine, here's the deal. Where do I go from there? How about I just take it all, let's just throw it all out on the internet and say, here, let the whole fucking world see it and then deal with it from there, because that's exactly what I'm looking at. I'm not finding a single... I have evidence that shows that she was in contact with me. I have witnesses who really don't like me at the moment, but they can vouch for the fact that she was in contact with me after Judge Hutchinson told her not to. Her own statements up there in front of Judge Hutchinson said that she didn't believe I was going to do anything to her until her mom, the prosecutor, and the cop told her. It's public fact in the newspaper that Duckworth and Palmateer are best buddies in the whole world, that a guy who shoots his wife in the back of the fucking head calls them immediately, which probably most likely means that's because he's expecting them to cover up for him because they've done it in the past. Now, you want to throw into that any number of the fact that my uncle went in there and said, no, the cops approached him, he didn't approach the cops, he wasn't maliciously coming at me under oath during the interrogatory? but the cop's search warrant says that my uncle came to them. Either way, whoever's lying, I don't care. If it's my uncle lying, then he's the witness they based the probable cause on, and I owe the cop an apology. He's not a corrupt asshole. I understand what you're saying. However, if the cop's the one lying about it, then you know what, he's a corrupt asshole, and I don't owe him a fucking apology. This is causing me a great deal of mental and emotional stress, and I'm not completely there to begin with. I know that. What's your address? P.O. Box 597, MacArthur, West Virginia. And that's another thing. The day that I was, before you were uh, uh, given to me by the state of West Virginia as a lawyer, the lawyer I had before, uh, I can't remember her name, as a female, I, I, you could probably look up the motions to get her name. When my, mom, my uh, best friend, Donnie McCoy, who was a witness for me in the fact that uh, Ashley Redden seen me at the mall. I told him we needed to leave, and then she went and told the police I was stalking her. I looked at her mean and followed her around the mall, which was complete bullshit. I hope so. All right, 
he sat there and talked to her in the lobby of the magistrate court. Told her that his mom is the uh, well, his aunt, who his stepmom, uh, is the head bartender at Morgan's. Not long after that, Ashley Redden quits her job at Walmart and gets a job working as a housekeeper at the uh, hotel attached to Morgan's. I got proof of that. I, I think I showed you a picture of it or something at one I point. They sent to me. Part of our orders, her employment records. Well, my point is this. How is it you're going to talk to my best friend, find out where his mom works, and then try to get a job right there? That's not her. That's not me stalking her. That's her stalking me. What's the fifth in the card? 25873. What's your phone uh, number? 304-860-0878. All right. got to get ready for a divorce hearing. I got in the morning. All right. Um, I'll uh, work on the motions and... Uh, because flat out the everything you can look at it and there's enough circumstantial evidence in court documents alone to show corruption bias all hell you can go back to the original case and see where a, uh, an FBI agent who doesn't exist Michael Kaczynski told Duckworth that I opposed apparently was going to go kill a bunch of cops including him and there was no recording of it. Now, I can tell you flat out that it is the federal standard because it was the federal standard in the military and it was the federal, it's the federal standard even with the FBI and everything else. I know this because I've worked with uh, FBI and stuff when I was doing my counterterrorism training. I have an uncle who was trained in Quantico. I, I know the federal SOP. The federal SOP is that any calls coming into a law enforcement agency are recorded. They are recorded for the safety of the FBI agents and the people calling in those calls. Because if somebody calls in and they're calling in a bomb threat, and they're calling in a bomb threat at, you know, saying they're going to blow up something at an airport, and you hear a subway in the background, it helps you locate subway terminals near airports. Or at least look towards subway terminals because you hear that train running in the background. It gives you that information. Sure. Okay, how come no such report was filed, or no such recording was filed along with the claim of uh, the threat I made? I mean, that right there would have been probable cause. That would have been lock, stock, and barrel. That wouldn't have been just been me threatening a cop. That would have been terrorism and a number of other things that could have hit me on. No, it didn't happen. Instead, this Michael Kaczynski guy, when I go finding out and investigating six years later, never existed. The only FBI agent with the name of Michael who's in uh, this part of West Virginia, who's been here for the past 10 years, is Michael Hayden. Well, let me file a motion, man. So, I mean, I, I, I'm telling you, there's a mountain of circumstantial evidence that vouches for this. I, I mean, this is throwing my career off track because of stuff I've wrote, research I've done. I was working on a book called Street Soldier, all right? The whole purpose of this book was comparing street gangs. Uh, I used spe very specific ones uh, as the basis, uh, Aryan Brotherhood, Black Guerrilla Family, stuff like that. Uh, the idea behind it was that these gangs, which are the ones that are known to push what they refer to as prison-based martial arts, were using the whole prison-based martial arts concept as a, uh, a, a line of, I don't know how to explain it, uh, a line of crap for paramilitary training. Uh, the Black Guerrilla family was originally trying to overthrow the U.S. government from inside the prison system by training violent offenders to be more violent, more professional in their violence. They used some excuse about a, uh, uh, an ancient African slave art that was brought over to America. Okay, that's possible because there's capoeira, which was brought over here that way. However, uh, they kind of sprinkle a little bit of untruth in with it just to get the attention of people to make them think, oh, well, you know, you got to go hate white people. It's no different than the KKK or anything else. I brought this up. In fact, if you check the Internet, uh, go to WorldWideDojo.com, uh, you'll find an article written by me that has my picture at the bottom of it. Your name? Yes. My name, Ron Collins, my picture at the bottom of it. Uh, and it's a picture that's sold from where my books are sold on Dojo Press, talking about how prison systems and martial arts are, or, or prison-based martial arts and prison systems are used as a way for criminals to network, to get together for the younger criminals not to have any, who don't know anything to get around older criminals who do have experience to teach them to learn things and how these gangs who push this prison-based martial arts stuff do so as a way of recruiting people. The, the higher you get in standing with the gang, the better you get in standing with the gang, the more they teach you. 
the more rank you have, based on more, the more knowledge you have. Because, and, and, it, and it talks about how, even from childhood, when you're talking about the lower class, violence is seen as a form of power. And you wrote a book on it? I was, working, I was working on a book on it when my computer was taken. I don't know where the hell I started off and left that. But the article is on WorldWideDojo.com. And, I mean, like I said, let me follow the motion. Well, uh, like I said, include all the little circumstantial facts that I've already told you that can easily be verified. And, there, I mean, just that right there should be enough to get a, a, a basically just light a fire into somebody's ass that, okay, fine, we're looking guilty. Do something with it. All right, man. All right. See you. Bye.